Now we're on to the tasting portion, and because we're uh, just a little white trashy, we decided <laughs> we decided to use. Would you uh, say tank top? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good thing I wore my tank top because this is hard work. Yeah, and this T-shirt was free. <laughs> Hi, and welcome to another episode of uh, Lucky Rock Wine Lounge. I'm Jesse Inman. And I'm Aaron, a little bit oaky Inman. You'll get that. That's right. Today we're going to be talking about oak and wine. Yeah. So uh, oak's been used in wine for quite some time. I think originally it was basically just a storage vessel. It was 100% like, a storage vessel. Yeah, they just put it in there and they're like, hey, let's put it in here. And then after a while they're like, actually, this makes the wine taste better. So... And as creative as wine people are, we've just been doing that for thousands of years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If it's not broke, don't fix don't it. Don't fix it. So today we're going to talk a little bit about how that oak gets into your wine, because that has changed a little bit over time. Uh, and then some things that uh, consumers, which is, is you folks, uh, hopefully you're buying wine. Uh, the industry sure needs it. Um, sure. So thank you. Uh, what you should know about oak, like how it affects quality, price, some of those kinds of things that are maybe a little bit... Um, helpful when you're at the grocery store aisle. Yeah, just because it makes it more expensive doesn't mean it's better. Yeah. You know. So we'll talk about a couple of those different things. And then once we're done with that uh, stimulating conversation, we will go into tasting three different um, Chardonnays, all from Sonoma County. Pretty similar price points, plus or minus 10 bucks uh, from a, a Chardonnay. We're going to focus on Chardonnay, one that has no oak at all, all in stainless steel, one that's around 15% new oak, and then one that's around 40% new oak. And, and we decided to taste them blind just for fun, kind of right before the episode, uh, just so we can uh, try and decipher which one's which, which should be pretty easy, but you never know. Yeah, you never know. And, and it's also... Um, when you're tasting for things like oak, a lot of times it's always interesting to see what your mind triggers on and you think you know it's oak and yeah. then, oh, maybe it's a different a different technique in wine that was kind of making you think that it was oak. So it'll be kind of fun. Yeah. So now that we've ended the episode, we're going to go back towards the first third and ask you to like and subscribe. Because you've obviously watched this whole episode and you enjoyed it. Yeah. So if you could hit that little button there and ding the like and subscribe and we'd appreciate it. And you'll see a squirrel pop out of your hard drive. <laughs> That's it. So the first topic we were going to discuss is how how that oak flavor gets into wine. And a lot of that is going to be, um, you know, to break down that discussion a little bit further, is like neutral oak, which is basically oak barrels that don't have any um, oak influence left in them versus new oak barrels. Yeah, we use the, the uh, analogy of a tea bag. You use a tea bag on a second uh, glass of or a cup of tea, it's not going to have much flavor left in it. Yeah. And who thought we'd be talking about tea bagging and size matters, but all of those kinds of things really play in with oak. Uh, and, and we'll leave that uh, potty talk at the, at the no more potty talk. No yeah. more potty talk. But essentially, and, and there, Jesse's going to go into like some other alternatives to barrels, but but neutral barrels. And when we're talking about barrels too, there's a lot of different sizes, hence what I was joking about earlier. There's all the way coming your, your traditional size oak barrel, which is about 60 gallons, or if you're European or basically the rest of the world, 225 liters, that's kind of your standard size barrel. And then they go all the way up in size. You know, the biggest we've really used is 600 liters before. It's called a punch in, it's pretty large. And that has a lot to do with how much oak is gonna get into the extraction ratios and all that kind of stuff. And then there's um, even a demi barrel, which I think is a half barrel. Sure, a little tiny yeah. guy, yeah. You don't, they're not cost effective. Yeah, not, not as, as standard. But so you've got um, the, the size of the oak, and then like I was saying, neutral oak versus newer oak. So a neutral oak barrel, I mean, it, it all kind of varies on the program that folks have, but we consider a, a barrel uh, void of really oak flavoring after about four fills. Um, and that's considered a neutral oak barrel. So you're getting a little bit of the, I mean, the, really the three ways to the three reasons to, to use an oak barrel are getting the flavoring into the wine uh, unlike beer we can't add any additives to to the concoction it's it's really oak is one way to do that and then there's the um, storage vessel like we talked about that's kind of been since the beginning of time of, of wine. And then there's a little bit of um, maturation and oxygen influence that you're gonna get into that wine. So that's the three reasons that people are using a barrel. And so that neutral versus uh, new oak, you know, that has a lot to do with that flavoring component, that first component that I was talking about. Yeah, there's chemicals in the oak, like velanin, which is like vanilla. And so that vanilla is actually uh, leached into the wine over aging. Yeah. And one thing you do, so going on to the, the oak alternatives, there's, <clears throat> 
there's chips. So basically you're taking the pieces of a uh, oak that's not turned into a barrel and you're using those residual pieces and chipping them and toasting them like you would a barrel. Yes. Because the inside of the barrel is typically toasted light or heavy or whatever, kind of like, like roast on a coffee. Um, and then- Which uh, is arguably the most important part of of how that barrel is going to influence wine so. is the toasting. Yeah. A lot of people talk about, you know, this forest and that forest. A lot of that's, I don't want to say debunked, it's but- marketing and it, whatnot. But. Yeah, but a lot of it has to do with that toasting level. Yeah. Yeah, and so the adjuncts, you can do many shapes and forms. There's chips, there's beans, there's uh, rods, there's full staves that you would put into the wood or into the tank. Um, and Aaron was talking about the, the maturation of the wood, which is basically the maturing of the wine. If you put all those oak adjuncts, those different shapes of wood that aren't a barrel, you're in a tank and you're not getting the oxygen coming through the wood. So you get this kind of flavor wonky wine, which most people probably wouldn't notice. But if you're putting chips in a tank, somebody who's been drinking a lot of wine, you're like, something's not quite right. And then you taste maybe the same wine out of a barrel. And you're like, oh, it's got the same flavor, but it's got this other roundness to it. That's what the barrel imparts. Um, and so the adjuncts are a cheaper way to impart flavor, but they are also kind of like cutting a corner. And they're, they're faster. Yeah. yeah, they're faster. So I feel like there was an analogy we were gonna use on that one, but I can't remember. I mean, the tea bag is a great example. I mean, if you've got, um, say you're in prison and- <laughs> <laughs> Delete. <laughs> but no, I mean, say you've got a, a, like a five gallon bucket and you put one tea bag in there. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're not really gonna taste that tea flavor, but you've got a, you know, a proper coffee cup and you put one tea bag in there, you're gonna get, that's kind of the same thing with a tank versus oak barrels and using those um, oak alternatives. And, and the other thing that maybe we didn't touch on, there's the cost of all these things, right? Like oak barrels or how expensive they are. And there's quite a gamut. We'll talk about that a little bit, but a lot of that cost, if you're going European oak, specifically French oak versus like American oak, yeah, there's some species differences and stuff like that. But like we were talking about a little bit earlier, that's not the biggest difference. A lot of times it's the curing and the toasting that, that has more to do with the ultimate flavors you're getting from those barrels. But the cost between American oak, uh, French oak, and European um, oak outside of France, like Hungarian or Bulgarian oak, is, is quite, quite huge. Um, and there's different reasons for that. And then the oak alternatives that Jesse was talking about, the beans, the staves, all those things, those are about anywhere from, the staves are about 20% less than a barrel mm. cost and about 10% um, when the, you're getting into those smaller products, like the beans and things. So there's a massive difference. 20% less or 20% of the cost? 20% of the cost. Yeah, totally. And 10% of the cost on the, on the smaller beans and, and, yeah. and grains. So where does that cost come from? A lot of it comes from, uh, and we were talking about this the other day, is the, the French oak barrels, you can only get about two barrels from a tree. And that mm. has to do with the, uh, the, um, the grain and how, it, how usable it is. Whereas the American oak trees, you can use almost, can use almost yeah. damn near the whole thing. Yeah. Um, so, so that has a lot to do with the cost. And then you get into the, the demand and the scarcity and things of that nature. And that all starts layering it on yeah. as well. Yeah, American oak was traditionally used in, in whiskey and uh, you wouldn't touch, winemakers wouldn't touch it with a 10 foot pole because they weren't very good at making barrels, but they've dialed in American wood and it's like in Rioja in Northern Spain, they use a lot of American wood and almost no European wood. Um, it's, it's also just, really hard to find a 10 foot pole. <laughs> I, I've yeah. looked for one. It's yeah, especially made out of American wood. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, so I guess next we'll move on to tasting. One thing I wanted to add is yeah. just to break it down because you know I'm the numbers guy here at Lucky Rock is, is how, you know, what's that equivalent of, um, of, of cost per gallon or per bottle. Oh, sure. So like in a super simple rudimentary example, let's say I'm making one barrel of wine, which I'd never recommend unless it's a hobby because it's just not, it's not realistic, but I've got one barrel of wine, that traditional barrel size that I was talking about earlier, 60 gallons. So that's, uh, that's gonna give you your, your and it's, say that's a new barrel, say it's, say it's a Europe, say we're gonna use a French barrel, that's around $1,200, where like an American barrel would be more maybe between $450 and $600. But we're gonna use a, a French oak barrel that's around $1,200. So we're talking about $20 per gallon cost for, for, for that oak barrel. Now put that into a bottle of wine, so you do some, some equations in your head real fast, and you get to that it's about $5 <laughs> a barrel. I mean, excuse me, five dollars a bottle. Wow! And so, you know, take that uh, some really rigorous math, multiply that by twelve, and you've got seven hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's about sixty dollars a case. 
is that oak cost for 100% new oak on French oak. I mean, that's pretty damn expensive. That's expensive. Um, so then when people are talking about like, oh, you know, why, why how can wines be so expensive? Well, do you want a $100 bottle of wine with no oak at that point then? Like, it doesn't feel like it's not justified anymore. <laughs> so that's a kind of an interesting, you know, just a little rudimentary, like how that cost gets in there. And obviously not a lot of people are using a 100% new oak, but like I had a wine last night because I'm super fancy that was 100% new oak. And there you go, there's the cost on that. Yeah. So one other concept we we're gonna talk about is like what you customers should know about um, oak and wine from a quality standpoint, mm. from a cost standpoint. We kind of just went over the cost. And so obviously the more new oak you're gonna have in those wines, it's gonna, it's gonna add up in, in, in what you're yeah. gonna pay on the retail side of it. But maybe let's talk a little bit about, well, what kind of, what, what's the quality difference here? Just because it's got new oak oh, doesn't mean woods. that it's good, yeah. Or just from a consumer, like, it, are all 100% new oak wines good? Are all my cheap wines good? Well, ultimately, um, if you're adding oak to a wine to enhance it, but at certain price points, you're adding it to maybe hide, hide flaws. flaws. Kind of like we've done a, an episode on sugar in wine. They add sugar to hide flaws in sure. wine. So if you're kind of beating that wine with maybe oak adjuncts like beans and chips it's like well maybe it's just not that full of a wine and it has these holes in it and you're trying to fill that with wood no pun intended yeah or you're growing that grape maybe in an area where it's not that conducive uh, to growing grapes mm -hmm. and so maybe you're growing Cabernet and Monterey which so right? it has, it has less tannin it, or something and it's more it's got a green component mm -hmm. to it heavily toasted oak can help hide some of that green yeah. so it's like a tool okay so consumers there's certain things that they would probably want to know when they're buying a wine when it comes to oak. What are some of those things you think? Uh, what varietals tend to be oaked versus not oaked is probably a good place to start. Yeah, so like maybe traditionally Chardonnay gets more oak, Sauvignon Blanc gets less oak um, because those flavors in Chardonnay maybe marry more with oak like butter Chardonnay, apple Chardonnay, vanilla oak versus uh, Sauvignon Blanc is more grapefruit, cat pea, and grass. Vanilla, oak, and butter don't seem to go as well with that. Sure. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, probably the white wine that's oaked the most is Chardonnay. And then from there, the more aromatic white wines, you know, your Sauvignon Blancs that you were describing don't tend to see as much oak. Um, and then from there, there's all kinds of interpretations yeah. from there. But at the, at, the, at the fundamental level, probably Chardonnay is your most oaked. Yep. Uh, white wine and, and Sauvignon Blanc tends to not see oak. And on reds, it's heavier reds typically get more wood. Lighter wines typically get a little less. Yep, I mean, generically, your low tannin, higher acid reds require a little less oak because you're trying to preserve those kind of uh, delicate aromas, whereas the heavier reds, like your Cabernets, maybe your Melos, lend themselves stylistically and, and just from a grape standpoint to a, to a heavier oak use. Yeah. So that's kind of like the next time you're at the grocery store, you can kind of use that rule of thumb. If you're, if you know you don't like oak flavors versus you, or you know that you, um, you really like oak flavors, you can kind of look in those generic categories. Mm -hmm. And then taste a lot of wines. I mean, at the end of the day, you're gonna start finding out that there's certain varietals and certain producers and certain regions that tend to use a lot of oak versus not, depending on what they feel like they're growing. And that's just kind of on you to do some some uh, some fun research and get out there and taste some wines. Yeah. So we'll do a little tasting now? Yeah. So now we're on to the tasting portion and because we're uh, just a little white trashy, we decided <laughs> we decided to use- Would you uh, say tank top? <laughs> yeah. Good thing I wore my tank top because this is hard work. Yeah, and this t-shirt was free. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. uh, we're, we're in a trailer. We're classy, we're classy people <laughs> on the inside. Um, it's funny, looking at these, I can almost tell you which ones are oaked, lightly oaked, and no oak. Uh, I would guess this one's 100% or... Well, let's tell these people, let's oaked. refresh these people on what this is. This oh, is yeah. Chardonnay. This is Chardonnay. All of these are Chardonnay from Sonoma County. These are from Sonoma County. And they're different levels of oak. And they're, yeah, so would you, you picked the wines. So I picked the wines. It was 30... We went from no oak whatsoever, uh, stainless steel 100%. Uh, yeah, you can kind of tell from the color. Yeah. Like we were talking a little bit, we didn't go too in depth, but obviously there's a little bit of oxygen ingress, which I believe that word means it's getting into the wine. <laughs> uh, that, you know, from a little to, basically with stainless steel, none to mm -hmm. different levels. And so we had a, a stainless steel Chardonnay, we had a 15% new oak um, Chardonnay, 
uh, even though all of it was in barrel, 15% of it was new. Mm -hmm. And then one that was 40% new with everything being in barrel. I'm guessing that's the... That's yeah. The, and so you, the color does yeah, tell Yeah, because it's, again, it's kind of like a tea bag. The more tea bags you put in a cup of tea, the more darker it's going to get. This one's darkest, this one's second darkest, this one's lightest. Yeah. So. Yeah. That, and those are some, some tells for yeah. sure. Um, that, that can also come with age of wine, right? But a lot of times these are pretty new. I think these are all... I tried to get the same vintage. I think they're all either 19, 2019 or 2020. So any color you're going to really see that's like kind of gold in there is going to be from oak yeah. treatment. Yeah, because yeah, otherwise you can get a little bit of color from age. Or shitty winemaking. Or shitty wine, oxidized wine. Yeah, oxidized wine. Uh, let's go left to right. Left to right. Okay. Yeah. It's pretty oaky. And oak's kind of one of those things like if you've ever uh, eaten salad with a bunch of people, like a vinaigrette salad, some people are like, whoa, this is really tangy and tart. And then some people are like, yeah, that's not bad. Yeah. It's like, it really can depend on the person. You know, did you smoke a huge cigar last night? Uh, did, did you, you sleep on your face? <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. It's funny, the, the first one, I was like, oh, that's actually pretty oaky. Until you get to the third one, oh, that one's a really oaky. <laughs> yeah. It's so oaky, you have, to, you, you have to drop an octave. Oh, really? Yeah. And you know, there's obviously there's smelling it and then there's tasting it too. Yeah. Like um, I'm just giving these a whiff. So I don't know. Yeah, it's pretty obvious which one is the 40% oak. I, I like this middle one with the no oak actually. Or, or neutral oak. Or the, uh, the one that had no oak on it whatsoever was all stainless steel. And that's sh that shows it's really angular and crisp. But it still does have, sh um, you know, I, I almost wish that this had some was in neutral wood because mm. it is missing a little bit of a roundness that I would want but um, I don't need the the oaky buttery component yeah it's pretty obvious it's funny because on on this wine on the far left and this wine in the middle at first I wasn't like super sold while you were talking I was like yeah this one could be the new but once you get it in the mouth yeah and then once you try that last one yeah yeah and so just to recap this that uh, on the far left here, we're saying that that is the 15%, um, the center one, or as we like to call it, purple uh, clothespin, <laughs> is is the 15% uh, new wood. Yeah. And we're saying that this uh, one on the far right is the 40% new wood. 15, 0, 40. 15, 0. And then so, and your favorite of these is? I, actually, somewhere in between the two, I would really appreciate the, um, the first two. Um, I mean, I, like, I, like, I guess long story short, I like them all for different reasons, but my, these two are my favorite. And if I was gunned to my head, if I was forced to pick one. God, this is tough. This is tough work. That's why I wore my tank top. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's why you did that. Yeah. Um, I got to say though, I'm not a... I, I like a, a, a thicker Chardonnay sometimes, but I'm not a big fan of, of stylistically of the far right. It's just a little yep. too heavy handed for yep. me, a little too rich. Um, I I think if I'm if I'm enjoying these myself, uh, I, the 15% new oak is probably the one that I'm gonna roll yeah. with. That. The, oak wise, uh, I agree. Um, it's I do I think if this one had a little bit of wood on it, it'd be my favorite because it's sure. it's got more. Um, and yeah, it's got some really nice acidity to it too. Mm -hmm. That, um, but then that gets into stylistic stuff, you know. Yeah. Like this winemaker chose not to to put it in any kind of oak whatsoever. And the price points are all the same. Yeah, give or take. Um, the stainless steel over here that was um, around twenty seven dollars. Middle one. Middle one. This is the stainless steel. Sorry, uh, the middle one is around twenty seven dollars. The fifteen percent oak was around uh, around forty dollars. And then the um, the forty percent new oak was actually around forty forty five dollars. So not a massive swing in price. Like the stainless steel one was obviously the cheaper, but for most people, a twenty seven thirty dollar bottle of wine is not cheap. So um, a, a lot of this really felt more stylistic um, to me in, in choice. Yeah. But, well, and so now you know everything about oak. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now you're ready to just go out there and start a winery. So we jumped the gun a little bit. We tried to end the episode, but we had to do the, <laughs> we had to do the big reveal. Uh, so Chalk Hill nailed it. Uh, Crossbarn nailed it. Uh, Ramy nailed it. 
Um, but yeah, so the Ramy, he's he can be a little bit more on the oaky side. He's dialed it back. He's dialed it back. Though, People that drink his wines will notice shows. he's dialed back his oak use and his richness, and I think for the better. Yeah, his wines I really like. Chalk them. Hill, notoriously pretty oaky, buttery, and I think Powerful. they did it. Yeah, they do a good job with their wines. Uh, uh, I know I've had the wines off and on over the years, and. If you like oaky buttery wine, it's a it's good. It's a stylistic difference. Cross barn, I'm not as familiar with. I've had it a few times. I've never had their no oak one before. Yeah, me either. First time. Um, I think the the fruit has a lot of potential. I think I would have personally put a, just a touch of neutral wood on there. But what do I know? Yeah, it's been making wine for 16 years. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So at the end of the day, you know, we were able to kind of determine which level of oak these yeah. had, but obviously we taste a lot of wines. But um, you know, as you start to get out there and taste some wines, you're gonna start to be like, well, I gravitate towards the no oak, the heavy oak, or or maybe lightly oak. Yeah, and then, then, you, then you find your favorite and play around in there, you know? Yeah, or, and you just buy that every time. No, don't do that. Get out there and experiment a little bit. Yeah. All right, well, I'm gonna go out with the Ramy because I liked it. Yeah, I think I'll go out with that same. So we'll see ya on the next episode. <laughs>